I feel kind of bad. I'm just sitting here watching this. This is not a very good reaction thing, but I don't really have anything to add. If a backing track is in G major, try G Lydian or Mixolydian. Whoa, wait a minute. What? Hold on a sec. This is number four, video number four of coattail riding. And today, let's see what we can learn from a video called Building the Better Guitar Scale, Part One, an algorithm for every scale, mode, and position. Free ebook. There's a free ebook attached to this. So there's a link to this original video uh, in the description of this video right now. So if you want to go check that out, definitely do so. We're going to see what we can learn in this video here. As uh, as you may may already know after watching the last uh, reaction thing, not really a fan of saying you can learn every scale, mode, position, anything like that, because no one can ever truly learn everything. But most likely, it's one of those clickbaity titles, and perhaps it can bring in, uh, you know, still help people when they watch these things, even though they're titled in such a way I'm not a big fan of. But hey, who gives a shit? This method is based on a book that I wrote in 2002 and published on Amazon in 2010. To build all diatonic scales and modes, we really only need to study the major scale. All other scales and modes will fall neatly into place once we understand how the major scale is constructed. I think that's a fair point. I also feel like the major scale is the most important scale because that's where all all our theory comes from. You know, once you, uh, you know, understand that the interval structure made for a major scale, and then you start to manipulate the notes of that major scale then that's where all these other modes and whatnot come from. To begin, we need to look at some patterns that outline the major scale. Yeah, so these are the three notes per string scale shapes I have all my students learn. It's stuff that I was taught. So, it's kind of cool here. Let's see if we can point this out. This first pattern, that's your major scale, and then he's just going in order. There's Dorian next. So if you just look here, if you get to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, those, that's basically the whole scale right there. You can move that pattern anywhere. But like for Dorian, you notice how this third note is one fret lower than this? And then we look at this note here. So we're gonna count up like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that seventh note is one half step below over here. So basically you take the the third and seventh note in this pattern and you flat those, that gets you this Dorian shape here. But let's uh, let's continue on here. I have a feeling I'm gonna start rambling off about modes. Maybe we'll get more in depth with that as we continue. Each of these patterns starts the major scale on a different scale note or scale degree. Pattern one starts on the first note or scale degree one. Pattern two starts on the second note or scale degree two. Pattern three starts on scale degree three and on up through seven. Taking a closer look at these seven scale patterns, we see that they are constructed only of three vertical finger shapes. So remember that last video I did? If you saw it, and I was talking about, well, the last live reaction I did. I talked about how there's basically three patterns that happen. You got the whole step, whole step. So this guy has it outlined in red or highlighted in red. And then the half step whole step is highlighted in blue. And then the whole step half step is highlighted in green. So you see it's just the same three patterns just stacked up and over and over and over again. Let's label these shapes X, Y, and Z. These shapes are the basis from which we'll construct all of our larger scale patterns. I feel kind of bad. I'm just sitting here watching this. This is not a very good reaction thing, but I don't really have anything to add. I mean, it's very well spoken well said it's very cool to see you know the image he has here um so so far i really don't have anything <laughs> to add other than like this is not an every scale thing this is an every scale for uh, you know your major keys or your minor keys right so every scale from the uh from the ionian mode how about that 
That part is true. The first finger shifts up one fret. Note that we are shifting up one fret in pitch, not up in reference to the diagram. I'm glad he pointed that out. Yeah, this is definitely a very useful video for people to watch in terms of uh, a very interesting way of viewing your scale shapes. I'm glad that the uh, narrator here mentioned that when he says go up, we're talking about going up in pitch. I noticed that's still a common mistake people have, or people make, is they uh, look with their eyes and say up or down instead of doing it with pitch. So there's something to point out. <laughs> there is, I can finally add in a tidbit. Remember, we're musicians here. When we say up or down, we are referring to pitch. For me, what's helping me think about his, uh, his, his approach, because I always look at it as whole steps and half steps with this, just kind of rewording what he's saying to help my brain understand it even better. Because, yeah, I'm not looking at things in terms of X, Y, Z. I look at it as whole steps and half steps, right? So every time when you change the pattern, when you're ascending, after you've done the whole step, whole step, it's going to always be the half step, whole step. And then after the half whole, it's always going to be the whole half. So with the Dorian shape, we start with the whole half to the whole whole. And then after that, when we go to the next finger pattern, it's the half whole again. With the Phrygian, we start with the half whole into the whole half. And then back to the whole whole. So, there we go. I finally had something to add to this. If you're having trouble remembering what the finger patterns are in terms of X, Y, Z, like I am currently, because this is brand new, like viewing it this way is brand new for me, I'm using what I already do know and understand, which is the whole whole, half whole, and whole half. So, maybe give that a try if for some reason remembering X, Y, Z is also a little bit, wait a minute, what the heck was X? What was Y? What was Z? I don't know. I don't cover the harmonic and melodic minor scales Ooh. in this method since they are non-diatonic, meaning they have notes that are altered in some way. However, once you've got a solid grasp of the Aeolian mode, changing it to harmonic or melodic becomes much easier. You know, one thing I noticed about uh, melodic minor, it's actually just your major scale with the third interval flatted. <laughs> So here's like your A natural minor. And here is melodic minor. So let's change that to, uh, I'm going to take it from a C major scale because we have less accidentals to, to deal with. So you got your C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So you just take the E and flat it, and you got C melodic minor. I think I remember, I think I used to view it as like, you take harmonic minor. So there would be A harmonic minor. You just take your A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and sharp that G. So that gives you harmonic minor. And then if you take the harmonic minor scale and raise the sixth note up a half step, in this case it would be F being raised to F sharp. Sixth note, raise it up a half step, and then you keep that guy there. So now you got your melodic minor by manipulating harmonic minor. 
But it's really just I the Ionian mode of the major scale with a flat third or minor third instead of the major third. Improvising along to backing tracks is the easiest way to make this method second nature to you. It's also there the are most thousands fun. of them all over YouTube, and they usually tell you what key they're in. When improvising, be sure to play all over the neck. Don't just stay in one position. Try changing keys and modes spontaneously. If a backing track is in G major, try G Lydian or Mixolydian. Whoa, wait a minute, what? Hold on a sec. <laughs> okay, we got something to point out here. So I agree that yes, practicing over backing tracks, improvising over backing tracks is, to me, a very fun way of learning your scale shapes and modes and all that. Um, we could definitely talk about a more detailed approach on how to move up and down the fretboard and play and all these things. So when learning scale shapes and learning to improvise, what I recommend my students do is stay in one place for a bit. Get comfortable with one shape before you start working with another shape and then another shape. So take your time on that stuff. Um, and then eventually, you know, work in like two or three shapes at the same time. Once you really know the fretboard up and down in one key, then you can start doing, you know, two or three strings at a time and just confining yourself to that. This way, you know, you're forced to look at the fretboard in a different way. Because if you are always looking at it in terms of like the three notes per string and all six strings, then you might just be stuck at looking at that one shape. But when you reduce it to just like, oh, you only have two strings, well, then you got to start looking at things in a more horizontal way instead of the vertical way. So that tends to help students a lot when, uh, when they're trying to break out of playing the same stuff over and over and over again. Um, I think he just mentioned that if you're playing in a, a key of G backing track, that you could also use Mixolydian? Well, no, not quite, unless the chord can, is always a G. Okay, here's, here's why that can work, and here's why it can't. All right, so we just said if the backing track is in the key of G, key of G major, then you can try using G Mixolydian or G Lydian with that as well. Well, here's the problem. G Lydian is not in the key of G. G Mixolydian is not in the key of G. G Ionian is in the key of G. It is the key of G. What makes the key of G? It has one sharp, which is F sharp, and it's this. So it's just G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. So let's say we're doing like a, a very typical chord progression in the key of G, like you're just a basic one, four, five kind of thing. So like new G chord, C, D, and then we'll just say back to C. Or we could we'll hit E minor instead. So we have four different chords. So if you were playing something like that, then your G major scale would work very well. However, we got problems with playing Lydian or Mixolydian starting on G. Now when you're playing the G chord, the Mixolydian mode, or the Lydian mode, it will work, absolutely. But the problem is once the chords start to change, we're gonna have issues here. So going into that C major chord, which is in the key of G, G Lydian is going to clash with this so bad because G Lydian has a C sharp. So 
So I'm just tapping that C sharp right now. Do you hear how dissonant that is? So the notes for G Lydian are G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and back to G. So it's very, very similar to Ionian, but that C sharp will really, really clash with a lot of things. Now let's look at um, that D chord. Do the notes of D major fit that? You'd have D, F sharp, and A. D, F sharp, A. So yeah, you could play the G Lydian mode over the D major chord, and that would work. And then your E minor chord, E, G, and B. So that would also work with the the Lydian mode there, G Lydian. But as soon as you hit that C chord, it ain't gonna work anymore. Basically, when you have a chord progression, if one of those chords uses a note that doesn't fit with that mode shape, uh, it's gonna clash. So yeah, you could play a G Lydian mode over a G major backing track, so long as the chords don't clash with that mode. So if you know what the chord progression is, you can take advantage of that and switch modes during a chord being played that fits with the mode. But if you stay in G Lydian the entire time you're improvising, when the chords being played don't fit that mode, it's gonna sound really, really, Blech. It's not going to sound pleasant. If you don't want it to sound pleasant, well then have at it. I mean, you can do whatever the hell you want when it comes to improvising, right? As long as you like it, that's all that matters. Let's look at Mixolydian as well. So, the notes that make Mixolydian are all natural. G Mixolydian is in the key of C major. There are no sharps, no flats. It's just G, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that F right there is going to clash with the D major chord in our progression. So again, playing like a G chord, C, D major, which has the F sharp in it, and then the E minor. So a G major chord, a C major chord, and an E minor chord, those are all in the key of C. So yes, G mixolydian will work perfectly well over those three chords. But that D major chord, because of the F sharp, the G Mixolydian mode would not sound good with that one. Not too good. So if I did this, let's see. Actually, I could probably just do it like this. Kind of sounds cool to me, but I like dissonant sounds. Did you hear that? doesn't quite sound all sweet and pleasing to the ear anymore. I'll move it back to an F sharp. It sounds a bit nicer. But anyway, so that's why, it, yeah, you could use the Lydian or Mixolydian mode, but you just got to be careful of what chords are being played because it's not always going to fit perfectly. I'm going to try using, I'll uh, just use Guitar Pro. See about putting in a just like a quick chord progression. G chord is G B and D. C chord is C uh, C E and G. D chord is D F sharp and A. Your E minor chord is E G and B. So we talked about three different modes, right? We talked about Ionian. So this is going to be like all G Ionian. So we got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. Uh, Lydian is going to be G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. So G Lydian is key of D major. 
So when you start playing G Lydian, you have essentially switched to the key of D. And key of D is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. All right, and then Mixo Lydian, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, so now we have that, the, the modes listed up here in the notes that are used to build those modes. And then down here, we have the notes f that make each of these chords. As long as the notes in the chords can be found in these modes here, you're good. That was using the, the Ionian mode over that, right? So yeah, I'm gonna use the Lydian mode now and see if you can hear when it doesn't really fit. So I did purposely try and hit the C sharp note, which is characteristic of the uh, G Lydian. I did that on purpose when that C chord was being played to hopefully showcase why that mode doesn't really work. Hopefully, hopefully that note sounded really sour, like ugh, like why why that note like it doesn't fit. I'm going to do the same thing for you know, demonstrating why G Mixolydian doesn't quite fit. It's just one note that just doesn't work. <laughs> So, again, I tried using that F note often when the D chord would come in. Even when the D chord's not there, it just doesn't really sound right to my ear to be using the F instead of the F sharp. So, any, did, did anyone notice how the notes didn't quite fit when it was a different mode? Or did it sound good to you after all? To me, it definitely stood out, the notes that were not with the chord progression. But let's also demonstrate how it could work. And I think if the chords were being strummed longer, then we have a little bit more wiggle room and we can change the mode a little bit more easily. Because with a chord changing this quick, it kind of creates a nice little like audio color palette. And we're just kind of hearing the whole thing at once almost, right? I'm gonna do each chord like four times. So with it like this, I think we can get away with changing the mode a little bit easier. So I'll start with Ionian again, and then I'll change it to Lydian after we go through the entire thing 
just making sure I go back to G. Ionian at the appropriate time. Same thing with Mixolydian. So, doing something like this, you know, going to Lydian, we can do that in, when the G chord's playing, but once that C chord comes in, we gotta go back to G. Ionian, or even G. Mixolydian, and that would work out okay. So anyway, let's start with fiddling around with Ionian, and we'll start changing modes here. And see if you can tell when the mode changes. See if you can hear a difference. <laughs> So to me, having more time with each chord makes it a lot easier to change modes like that. Another thing you can do, because we have the chord you know, sitting there for a while, we can change keys along with the chord. So like when it's a G chord, we'll just play in the key of G. When it's a C chord, we'll go to the key of C. When it's the D chord, we'll go to the key of G. Now, E minor is the relative minor for G. Oh, well, we'll just go back to the key G for that one anyway. Why not? So now I'll do this kind of a similar thing, but I'll change keys with the chord. A G major and E minor, it's going to be the same key because they're relative to each other. <laughs>
I try to make a conscious effort to kind of like have a shared note when changing keys. So it has like a nicer transition instead of just going straight to the different note right away. So there we go. Hopefully that gives people some improvisation ideas to try out. All right. Time to end it.